when I saw my um, experience since 2018, exactly with the Bloitec uh, technology, uh, so there were the, uh, the public were not aware about the uh, uh, not not the blockchain only, but these new technologies. Yeah, so these disruptive technologies that we we calling them. So that that is the the reason uh, what I see after these five six years is uh, 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 of course the. Uh, some change in their behaviors. And about that, we want to speak with our guests. Um, OK, about, so my name is Thomas Smus. He's a uh, Thomas uh, Richter. Uh, he's uh, he's uh, um, in, and, and, and Katarzyna Beres. Uh, she's a consultant. Here's a guy who drives the innovation in the um, in the public sector in the innovation center and so and I working with the private clients uh, on the private uh, uh, blockchains uh, web tree solutions uh, et etc mm, okay we are not so stressed we are not so nerved but uh, the topic is um, yes important to us yeah before we go ahead uh once again oh, i would like to uh add you katarina from your experience from the background because i know you are now handling with the security in the uh, in the um industry area yes can you tell more yes of course uh, so thank you for your introduction so you introduced me as a consultant so it's you know very far and distance uh, past yeah, no, for you me you are the founder is now the <laughs> yes start now so. uh, after leaving the consulting company i started uh, uh, my um, own company with other co-founders and now we are um, managing the uh, startup uh, in fact it's more even a scale up already uh, that deals with cyber security but in very specific area in industrial area yeah? so not you know about the um, office network IT network but we deal with uh, OT network so operational technology and this is very specific area and uh, to be honest uh, we don't use blockchain yet so I hope I will be inspired today but we use for example uh, artificial intelligence and this is uh, a thing that I I think that I can uh, share a bit with you later on Okay, so thank you for the introduction as well. Uh, my name is Tomasz Richter and I work for the Centralny Ośrodek Informatyki. In English it would be the Center for IT. It would be, I think, the best resemblance of what we are doing. We are a public sector company, uh, really specific kind of the company that cannot uh, earn money. But what, uh, what our focus is, we are the uh, Center of Excellence for the Ministry of Digitalization. Uh, I mean, let's leave the history behind because it was Ministry of Digitalization then the Prime Minister's Office, now again um, Minister of Digitalization, but the, the main thing, the most important thing is that what we are doing uh, in, in our center, uh, we are uh, supposed to lead the way of how the public is changing and how the public is uh, digitalizing the areas of the public life. Yeah? So I'm the head of the uh, quality and innovation, innovation innovations department. And uh, what we are doing, we are focusing on, on our first, we are focusing on our customers, on, on, on people who live in Poland and who needs to uh, use our apps and our e-services. And we are putting them in the center of our interest we have the big research team that is uh, checking with the uh, with our users what they want how they are using uh, our solutions and the most important part is, and I think that's why I'm, uh, right here in, in, uh, at yes it is that we are also adding the component of new technologies to what we are doing uh, I think new technologies well they are not that new but uh, but for the for f and uh, even for the public sector they are not that new mostly used uh, well for let's say back office solutions
solutions and uh, it's hard to to see as a as a citizen where these new technologies are are present and our role is to to, to change that situation and and to introduce this to also to to the things that are uh, delivered for for citizens yeah when i back uh, to the history to the to 2018 i remember a lot of a uh, group of people that try to educate the public sector about the, this new technology disrupting, of course, the blockchain and the cryptocurrencies. And the Poland was one of the first places uh, in the world that had um, proposed some uh, agenda for the exchanges, for for instance, to regulate them in 2016. And there was a, a, a lot of people that fascinated this technology and influenced the uh, public sector, but the public sector didn't respond that time. And this is the question, what has changed after this five, six, even eight years uh, until today? What, what is your uh, thought? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a complex topic. Let's start with that. Well, public sector, the, it's, it's not uh, one, like one body. There is a public sector of uh, the local one, where there are local governments, and there is a public sector on the, lev on the country level, yes? And the, what, uh, with, the con with innovation and with any other competences, what you need to start with is to build the competences itself, yes? You will not do the innovations if you don't have enough knowledge how to do so and of course Poland has one of the best uh, computer science uh, guys and girls uh, but uh, they need to earn money yes and uh, if you will uh, and we all heard about these offers that well we are looking for someone who is 15 plus years of experience and we would like to pay the person uh, as low as it is paid for the for someone who's uh, selling groceries yes so the the main thing for us that have, has changed, the public sector on the country level has recognized that it will never work without the proper uh, proper mindset and proper uh, competences built on our side. And in, in our organization, we are buying the uh, report, uh, payments, uh, salaries reports, and our, our, our salaries uh, are uh, up to date with the uh, market. Uh, Katarzyna, what is your remarks? Because you were at that time, I, I suppose, as a consultant, this is <laughs> what I remember. But now when you compare this time to today. Okay, so um, what I can refer to uh, when it comes to public sector is uh, public sector in terms of state-owned companies, yes? So including also uh, companies with critical infrastructure like, for example, energy sector, oil and gas, uh, transportation, uh, and big manufacturing uh, companies uh, owned by, by the state. And what we observed uh, uh, for last, I think, six years when we are on the market uh, is the fact that the cybersecurity in industry uh, wasn't existent, uh, wasn't, um, wasn't uh, existing at that time. Uh, and uh, it was very difficult for us to raise the awareness of companies, of dot companies, um, that the cybersecurity in OT part is very important, yes, because, you know, IT and OT started to be interconnected and uh, the new attack vectors appeared uh, and uh, very often the attack vectors uh, comes from the um, come from the IT network and goes to the OT and uh, when we you know we when we have the uh, synergy between those two worlds then it's important to take care of the the industrial part so the awareness uh, were raised very slowly uh, and now we can observe that the public sector is preparing for uh, procurements yes preparing for uh, acquiring from the market solutions that will help them to uh, to build resilience and to be uh, um, and to to protect against the cyber cyber attacks yeah yeah that's true also i would say that the recent events were 
well, helpful in, in that context, yes, because first COVID, then the war on Ukraine. Uh, people, w first, they started to walk from the office to and start to working from their homes. So before that, when I was working in, in banks, uh, the bank was saying be, the security is uh, covered because you are work working from the office, yes? And then we started to work from our homes, not from the office, so you need to think about sec security from the other perspective, yes? Uh, of course, this this thinking, this kind of thinking was was wrong in the beginning, but but still, that was the mindset, yes. And and the, this has changed. Uh, the other part, war on Ukraine, yes. For for us uh, in in our uh, in our uh, company, it was first time that we have used the uh, public cloud because uh, normally and how we started, we started by operating the national registry, special registry. Uh, registry of uh, vehicles and drivers. Did you start at that time uh, using these disruptive technologies? Uh, well, f this was this the, this the the reason was that uh, so we've got these registries and they are on prem yes because they need to be secure and no one can have to access to them. So two years so, ago, we you were yeah. not also open, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. We are not done. We are not that open, but uh, of course we are thinking that it would be nice, but maybe later, maybe it's not the time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then we needed to set up the uh, iHelpUkraine.gov uh, service, and we knew that Russian hackers will try to put it down. Yes, so we, we we knew that we need to put it outside of our premise of outside of our servers So if they will succeed they will uh, the rest of our system will not go down The only the website the service will go down. Yes, the, and that's why it, it was the reason that in two days We decided that, okay now it's the time that we will use the uh, okay, public so, cloud uh, Like the COVID this war situation this crisis. Yeah, uh, in security area uh, invaded you to take this decision and and take the next level uh, in in uh, developing the uh, yeah. infrastructure. Speed up, yes. I would say it's it speed it speed it speed up some some things. Also, it is uh, about the awareness, yes. So more and more people, yeah, because it, it, uh, you are saying about the past few years, yes. And yes. this this awareness was was start, uh, it was started. Uh, over uh, at this time, yes, but it was gathering some slow traction, and the things speed up because of this. Now we, uh, you know, the, the taxi driver knows about cybersecurity because in the news they are saying that Russians trying to hack us. Yes, so so that's the that's a big switch of uh, of awareness uh, around all of us. Yes, and also around the public sector. Oh yeah. Also, uh, so we see here clearly something that uh, the change happening, uh, starting from the awareness. Okay. Um, maybe the other uh, questions, uh, Katarzyna. Um, now you the startup funders. You are in the security area. You uh, uh, you starting using this um, uh, artificial intelligence intelligence. What happens in the um, this um, companies, these entrepreneurs, uh, or this uh, in, in your industry that they open to these uh, new disruptive technologies? Yeah, so this openness, in fact, is still uh, evolving, I would say. So it's not so uh, so big openness. So we also work with um, the prime minister office to make um, these companies more fam more uh, familiar with the technology because we need to, um, of course, give time to adapt these um, uh, innovations, um, especially when it comes to critical infrastructure, yes, because this is a very sensitive area. Uh, and uh, what is preferred in that area uh, is the technology that is used for many years and is uh, well known. But in fact, uh, cybersecurity in industry is quite new area. So the, each solution in that part is uh, quite new. So uh, it's not yet mature, as we yes. Yeah, so yeah. it is yeah. quite mature, but uh, the maturity of uh, to intake uh, to uptake this uh, this uh, of this uh, technology is. Um, more complicated, yeah. But uh, as we discussed, the the war on Ukraine um, accelerated this awareness, and now uh, it is uh, visible interest in that area. 
and in fact uh, the cyber uh, what we what we face now is the cyber war, cyber war yes because this is not only what is uh, going on in Ukraine but it affects us uh, it affects um, it affects also the United States uh, government and uh, we are uh, all the time challenged by the US uh, by Russian sponsored uh, hackers uh, and uh, what we provide, uh, just to be precise, is the solution uh, that is monitoring the industrial network, the network that, were, that was uh, till now completely separated, like, you know, like uh, with the fans, yes, from the external world. So it was, you know, quite safe environment. But now as, as soon as the interconnection uh, progresses, then it is not uh, anymore possible to, to be so separated, yes. So uh, we delivered the solution that is monitoring that area that was in fact, a bit neglected, yeah, uh, and we detect any anomalies that um, appears in that network, uh, including also cyber attacks, yes, and we use uh, three types of detection uh, methods. This is signature-based, rule-based detection, and behavioral detection, and this behavioral method is based on AI, yes, and here, why it is so important, because um, AI allows us to detect uh, uh, cyber threats that are unknown. Something that never happened before, yes, and we, do, we don't have the signature of that, uh, of that uh, cyber threat. And this is especially important in, in current geopolitical situation because we are able, thanks to AI, to detect so-called zero days, so the cyber threats that are unknown, in mm -hmm. fact. Uh, Katarzyna uh, uh, and Tomasz, I discovered in the one of the first panel uh, that in Poland there are uh, several spots, uh, uh, Rzeszów, uh, Rybnik, Olsztyn, Kołobrzeg, that that's started already using this different um, uh, disruptive technologies, yeah? Uh, and what the leaders said, um, uh, they facing different uh, uh, problems uh, in the, in be, because first of all they are in the uh, public uh, sector, and they see uh, that many um, people that are working with, so I mean the, um, the the employees for for instance, are um, not aware and uh, afraid of these uh, new uh, threats and the technologies. So what is your uh, view um, uh, to, um, yeah, to the situation in, in, in our country, in, in, in Poland, in these technologies, yes? So again, to, to go back also to, to what Katarzyna was saying and, and to your previous question and your current question, it's again about the competences and about what, what we know, yes? The, the, the fears and also why we are not adapting the technologies as fast as we can. Well, well because working in a public sector is not like going to the candy store, so you can buy anything that you want when you want, yes? You've got this whole process of... Uh, uh, public orders, yes, or, and you, you, you cannot buy what you want. You need to do, if you want to buy something, you need to do it in specific, in very specific way, yes? So even to buy something, you need to have pro proper knowledge to write properly the order of what you need to buy. To do, write do, it down, do you, you need to have the this is procurement, uh, some kind of the procurement? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so again, so, so the fears of people who are using it, the and the, but first the the fears of people who need to buy something. Yes, if I don't know what I am, what I am buying, and if Katarzyna comes to me and I don't know anything about the topic or I know r really not that much, I don't know if she is selling me something that is useful and nice or she is selling me something that I will well spend money and I will not achieve any business gains. Yes, so so if I have knowledge, I can assess that and then. I I can do uh, all of these things uh, quicker and, well, make it happen. And then I am less in fear and I'm avoiding vendor lock, yes? The, because what we are seeing, especially in, in some bigger uh, organizations like, well, let's say ZUS, yes, National Insurance, well, they have vendor lock. And wh why is that? Well, because they were not prepared, I'm so sorry for saying that, Zeus, to, to, to properly assess what they want, uh, when they want it, and how to buy it. Okay. And you, Kasia Roger? 
Yes, yeah, so maybe I will refer to um, one of uh, the latest cyber attacks, <laughs> in fact, on supply chain. Yeah, this is something that maybe public sector is also afraid of. Yes, because you never know what you are buying. Yes, because um, there is a cert there are certain stages uh, uh, between the public sector and the first. Uh, I don't know code provider yes part of the of the solution provider uh, and also you have in between the integrator so potentially the company that is installing deploying the solution uh, so what uh, the, the one of the most uh, infamous cyber attack on uh, supply chain was solar wind and it uh, started in 2019 uh, and uh, it was uh, about the company that is, uh, that, uh, is producing the uh, tool for monitoring of IT networks and uh, many companies are using, I, I don't know if still, but they were using it uh, to monitor their networks, including also US government. Yeah, And finally, approximately 30 uh, companies and uh, also uh, institutions, administrative institutions uh, were hacked. And the origins of that attack was um, uh, hacking the uh, solution provider, installing the uh, plug-in uh, in, in that platform, uh, and uh, this plug-in became a kind of backdoor. Uh, and while updating by the clients of that company, updating the platform, yes, because regularly you need to update the software that you are using, like with Microsoft, uh, they automatically installed the uh, malicious software on their uh, in their on their computer computers or in their uh, networks. Yes, so the impact was uh, huge, and uh, even the. U.S. government wasn't able to protect against that. Yes, okay. so the same fear can uh, have Polish. Okay, Be because I think that my our panel is uh, going to finish. Uh, five minutes. Okay, but um, let's try to summarize or give some recommendation um, to the public institution or the different uh, states, uh, the uh, uh, and the local entities, uh, what um, they maybe should, uh, how they should behave, what they should do uh, to um, implement these uh, innovations, yeah, these uh, innovative technologies that we are as a young, maybe not so young, so, but, uh, but I feel like the Z uh, generation, yes, uh, and what, what they should do, yeah, uh, what is your uh, thoughts? Uh, uh, yeah, please share. Well, I would say build competences, but of course it's not that easy for the smaller ones, yes, because I, uh, if, if you are from the bigger city, you have enough money to do so, but if, uh, or not, yeah, I know, I, I'm looking at Poznan uh, friends, uh, but uh, but actually it is also, I think, and what is the, the Minister of Digitalization saying, it is our role to help them, yes, so, so we have, uh, we are in the center of that, we have the uh, knowledge and we have the, well, let's say source sources that that are needed to do so and actually what it is what we are doing right now so so we are trying to build the solutions that can be then implemented by the smaller municipalities uh, smaller smaller cities yes so so uh, i don't know if you are really small and you don't have money well you are in really really bad position and it's hard to be wise guy to tell someone who has no resources to to be better but uh, if i think it is for our job to to help them not to only look for the bigger cities and at, at warsaw but but also to 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 remember that there are other parts of poland that need to help and only if we will be digitalizing uh, as a whole country, not uh, the forerunners, then we will achieve the success and the general resilience of us, of our society, will uh, go up. So a short comment from my perspective as a vendor, so as a producer of such an innovative uh, solution, um, uh, is to perhaps uh, use the um, American experience uh, because what they did, it was uh, in mid-2022, the national um, supported authorities, I mean NIST uh, institution, uh, together with national laboratories, 
tested several uh, solutions for cybersecurity, for example, and um, presented the results of this uh, testing. Of course, these were very good vendors, so the tests were um, obviously quite quite okay. But what it uh, what was the result? The result uh, was you know gaining a trust uh, to these technologies. Yes, so the. Other companies from public sector, like for example uh, companies with critical infrastructure, gained more trust to those uh, technologies because they were simply objectively uh, tested. Yeah, so such a project was uh, implemented last year in the United States. Yeah, so I, I, I identify uh, some um, crucial points that uh, first changing the, the mindset even you are the public institution, so you you cannot uh, fear that the something is new. So you try, it. you need to find the partner that explain you, educate you, inspire you uh, to get the um, uh, network uh, of the uh, rare consultants, <laughs> rare uh, people on the market that face at this. Um, uh, challenges with these technologies. The other thing is that. Um, Innovations won't happen uh, without the people because people, <laughs> if they are open, they uh, open these innovations. Yeah. So you need to find uh, uh, a masses even in the in the in the public sphere that uh, are sure with this decision uh, going further and uh, uh, with this step. Another thing is um, uh, being uh, maybe uh, not maybe uh, in all decision making or the maker, but maybe the uh, the, the the helps uh, in even my partner as a vendor um, achieve uh, our uh, common uh, goals, our common uh, results. Yeah. Um, so, because you mentioned this, uh, this example with this uh, ZUS, uh, the, the, the Polish insurance uh, public uh, company. Um, and the other thing is that uh, have uh, the resources, of course, uh, because if I have resources, I can um, predict a little bit the future. I won't answer anything, but I can be sure uh, uh, what I do, yeah.